much like a lion likes to have and South Africa is a multilingual society that has some unique linguistic problems because of its quality or poverty. Have you ever, did you know that the South Africa languages depends upon their skin color, their race, and their standards of the society? Well, on one level, their attention between the official language groups, the Afrikaans and English. On another level, there are linguistic tensions between ethnic Europeans and black majority. You know that black and white of preference, and mostly regard with language instructions in school. So with the multi-ethnic society that we have, the black of preference, the Europeans, the Africans, and English, what did the South Africa do? Or what does uh, what policy did they implement so that the language can be understood by the majority of the people? The original European settlers in 1650 spoke Dutch, which eventually involved in Africans and British gained control of the plain English as the language of the school. Just like us, we are also colonized by the other, yeah. in other countries, so just like them, they know how to speak Dutch and ancient by the British. English is a form of introductory language in Africans, mainly in a rural part. So um, let's have uh, let's first focus on the Africans and English. So by then, we already know that there are two languages speaking in South Africa. South Africa, black and white. About 70 percent uh, of South Africans speak one of the Bantu languages. Anyone who knows what is Bantu? Bantu languages. So Bantu languages is the language is called uh, is the languages of the black African people. And there is almost perfect connotation between race and languages because Bantu, uh, the, pe the people who speak Bantu are only blacks. They are the only ones who are not the only enough to speak the language. And there are few blacks who do not speak a Bantu language because as we all know, it is colonized and they have different, they came from different places. And no black and black speaks only a Western language. As in many folks who are not African languages. In 1935, a policy of teaching in both English and African on a 50 basis in the second and the secondary schools was adopted. So, by the 1955, they have an agreement that those two languages will be, uh, will be taught and speak in a different basis. So, maybe you can write in Africans, speak in Africans, or maybe you could write in English or speak in English. It depends on the speaker. And language and politics are very much intertwined in South Africa and they're everywhere. The government's divide and counter approach to black language policy is aligned with motivating systems of law that gives black and permanent public. Also, oh, we're talking about the Bantu. Because of the Bantu language that we have, those Bantu language and the people who speak that serve as the standard of society. So if you, if, you, if you speak the Bantu language, then that means you're part of the underprivileged sectors of the Africa. And it is the system of those that keep us in permanent poverty because they are colonized by the English or the British rather speaking English, Bantu, Africans, or any other languages is a major plus for them. And uh, people who are living in a poverty or uh, living in the poor areas are the ones who do not know how to speak the other languages, just only Bantu. That's why they're uh, they're leveled as a level of the poverty. And like the policy is needed in the area of language, as well as many other aspects of that. Do you know how? Have you learned something from the South Africa and their language policy, guys? Really? Yeah. So, may I ask someone to uh, please respond, uh, please define or please give your info back about the language. Uh, what is the Bantu language? Yeah, the Bantu language is the language of the Black American. Now let's move on to the not really popular country, but with a different and very unique language policy. The Luxembourg. So now we're going to the Luxembourg. Uh, in Luxembourg, do you know what is Luxembourg? Where? Well, this place is um, uh, is a very unique one. Why? Because in uh, in Luxembourg, euthanasia, euthanasia and assisted suicide is legal in Luxembourg, meaning to say they are uh, it is accepted in their country. 
himself because of uh, the depression and everything uh, in the in their society uh, from the in their society. The Nazi brings the least populate the least populated of all the European countries. Why? Because it is yeah. As you can see, it is not that popular and um, it is a very uh, uh, small country in the uh, uh, in, in Europe. Next one is the Luxembourg as the highest minimum wage in Europe. In Europe, in 1920, Europe, Europe, uh, because it is a, a small country. Well, uh, of course, the, uh, the population there is also is also that small. That's why it has the highest minimum of wage in the country. Uh, officially, the Grand Duchy of Luxembourg is a small land of country in Western Europe. So, that, uh, as, well as what, as, uh, as what I have said a while ago, it is um, a very, uh, a very small country, and it has a different, uh, a different and a unique uh, food. So in uh, in Luxembourg there are three languages and these are recognized by French, uh, German, and Luxembourgish. In uh, Luxembourgish, these three languages speak uh, language policy in Luxembourg. People who are engaged in administrative jobs and expected to respond in citizen in this language are uses the German, French, and the Luxembourgish uh, language. So in their country, the language law in 1984, which is still in force according to the language law, Luxembourgish is the only defined as the national language. So uh, people there, uh, the basic, uh, I, the, official, the official language they use is Luxembourgish because um, it is their native language. And, uh, Though that's the though that's the case in, in their country, they have two two other uh, two other languages, which is the German and French. So they can choose whether whether which of which of them where they will they uh, learn or use the mother tongue, the basic knowledge that supports the learning of foreign languages. So the Portuguese um are using the French language and uh, they are agreed to, uh, to use the number fish because there is there are living in the number fish country. So the, this is what I have said a while ago. The national language is the number fish, the official language in the schools are German, German or the French. Next is the Papua New Guinea, which is one of the most culturally diverse countries in the world. It is also one of the rural diverse countries as only 80% of people live in urban centers. Here in Papua New Guinea, uh, languages are... Since it is the most linguistic diverse country, the languages here are... Uh, depends on the person who uses it and depends on the the place or the people surrounds them. In 2006, Prime Minister Mr. Michael Sumer stated that Papua New Guinea has 832 living languages, making it the most linguistic diverse place on earth. Its official language are Tokisi, English, Hirimoku, and Papua New Guinea Sign language. So during this time, Duolingo Francas emerged, one associated with Australia, which is the Hiriwoku, and the other region Rio to Pisi. The latter development has convenient Lingua Franca with a mix of German, English, Polynesian, and some local languages. It allows people to respect the talkness or the talkness, the local language, village, or across the mountain, or one talk, one talk of their relatives and friends. Let's move on now with Australia. Australia is a hand to another country with the words 30 and 91. And did you know that Australia has a very um, historic 
pregnant mothers. Uh, when we say about the wife was pregnant mothers, it means the uh, native to give up. Uh, uh, because of the colonization, they are colonized with a different culture. Uh, they want the people living or the native of her house, the native Australian people to give up. That's why they promote the white Australian policy. And the next one is integration. It means it's to give up the white American in the 1970s. Why did they give up the, why did they give up the white Australian policy? Because, because of the people, it makes no sense. Because why are you going to give up the language of the native people when they are the one for living? Uh, living originally in Australia. So in 1970, they gave up the white Australian policy and that thing is called integration. Next level and the last one is the Hawaii culturalism. This one is the most uh, present and the most updated most that they have. First is they enjoy high standard in the English language. Second is the right for a bilingualism. And third is that all immigrants are all acceptable. We all know that Australia accepts immigrants and people living from the different places who want to live there and open all and open their houses, the country for the many opportunities. And because of that, the local culturalism uh, gives way to the people that they accept the different uh, the different languages that people have as long as they can speak uh, English. And in Australia, did you know that aside from the English speakers, mostly are the dominant language used by the people in their homes is Chinese. Because the Chinese or China is the country who colonized it, the American and the reason for the white Australian virus. The last one is Margarita. So when you say about the word uh, Puerto Rico, there are there are there they, this uh, this country has the most number of offending of society, and the only thing that you will say about this is that for, uh, Puerto Rico accepts all the languages that we have. Besides from the history that 